Hi, I'm your host, Vasco Duarte. Welcome to the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast, where we share tips and tricks from Scrum Masters around the world. Every day, we bring you inspiring answers to important questions that all Scrum Masters face day after day. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Thursday this week with Jan Neudecker, where we talk about success for Scrum Masters. And of course, we start first with the retrospective. Jan, welcome back. Hi, good to be back again. Let's dive into retros. What's your favorite retrospective format and why? Yeah, there's so many which I like, but I'll, I'll pick one I really like for an early phase of the retro to just gather data. I like the, the movie critic format where I ask team members to imagine the last iteration as a movie and uh, have them describe what kind of movie was it. Yeah, was it... Uh, a comedy? Was it an action movie? Was it a love story? Um, who were the characters? What plot twist? And so on and so forth. Um, I especially like these kind of, of methods. Uh, you could also say, uh, like, write an Amazon review, it goes into the same directions, which first of all, don't really seem like actual work. But by just posing such a simple question, a team member has to reflect on what did actually happen. And so the, I like these very, very fun, but still extremely impactful uh, retrospective opening uh, methods because they, they help me and the team create a lot of transparency about how did everyone within the team perceive the last iteration. So that's one of my favorites. And um, yeah, I'll stick with that. Yeah, absolutely. We very often talk about this type of formats like this metaphor format, right? Like they don't tackle the issue head on, but rather they use some metaphor in order to talk about the issue. And that also helps us be more creative, right? It helps us consider aspects that we would not otherwise consider. Yeah. So, of course, we, we run these retrospectives and we emphasize the need to run retrospectives because we want to have a successful impact on the lives of the teams we work with. And that's really the question we want to explore next, Jan. What does success mean for you as a Scrum Master? Uh, I like to look at that from two different dimensions. So one would be like the, the business perspective and the other one would be the people perspective or the team members perspective. From a business perspective, I would say a Scrum Master or yeah, the team is doing a good job if we are able to constantly generate value. And how do we know that we generate value? We get great feedback from our stakeholders. So what I very often observed in the past, and, and that's actually a sad thing, is that most teams are really far away from their users, yeah, from their stakeholders. So I, I really like to put that as, an, as a point of measurement uh, when I work with teams on how good can I make that relationship or can I make the team make the relationship? Because I don't need to build that up. It's it's more their job and the product owner's job to to get close to the users. But am I able to to make clear why that is of value and why they should start doing that? And if I then see that um, stakeholders and and customers or users are really celebrating the product in retrospectives and uh, in, in reviews and in sprint reviews, uh, that's something which I can use to to see did I achieve something yeah? or, or how is my impact here based on where did we start as uh, as a team when, when, when we started working together. Uh, that's the one thing. On the other hand, I believe that happy people will do a good job. Yeah? And, um, humans don't need to be motivated. So whenever someone asks me, uh, what can I do to motivate my team? I, I would rather say, um, and that's not my, my quote, I, I read that someday, and but I really resonate with it people are motivated. So whenever I went into a new assignment or into a new job, I start there full of fire and, and full of enthusiasm. Figure out what stops people being in that state yeah? and, and rather tackle that. That's the other th thing. So uh, when I start working with a Scrum team, it's very rarely that I meet uh, a team where 100% is really totally happy with the situation. And that's my other point of measurement. So what I always do when I start working with teams is having one-on-one -on -one conversations with every team member. Um, first of all, to, to build a personal connection and to get to know the other person. But then I also ask them, I'm here now. What did you think or what were your emotions when you heard someone like me is coming? And what are your expectations to my role? That gives me something which is measurable to, uh, to see, am I achieving value for the team members? Because I, I want to serve them. I'm a servant leader as a scrum master. And um, it's totally fair to ask them, what do you expect from me? 
it also helps to to clarify unrealistic expectations which might come up but on the other hand that usually gives me a very very good overview of what's the status of the team and how can i help every single individual uh, and how can i make them more happy and and more purposeful at their work we we were talking about individual sustainability on tuesday yeah. and uh, i think you you raised another point that uh, requires us to talk about it a little bit more which is in this case not sustainability but rather individual motivation mm-hmm. very often we hear about how to motivate teams well it's not enough to motivate teams right like I w- we talked about on tuesday uh, we we need to look at both the system so the team as well as the individuals yeah. the team members and as scrum masters that should be in our list of things to check on a regular basis. It's not only about how the team is motivated or not, but it's also about how each individual, like what's their situation at the moment. And not everybody needs to be all the time motivated. That's not what I'm arguing for, but rather that we are aware of it, that we take that into consideration and and explicitly work on that aspect. I agree. And that's also a point of what what kind of behavior do we as a company um want to see from our scrum team members is that transparent yeah? so sometimes I, f- I saw that people were demotivated because they felt like i want to do something and this will maybe get me even punished when i start doing that even though i think it makes sense yeah? but then creating the transparency or even taking that as an impediment if, if that is one and that's really the case it can be super helpful to remove that or to get that clarity up to the next person who can change it yeah? and, and then see that you can get those people into a state again where they feel like the, the fire burning again and, and want to change things. Yeah, absolutely. I, l- I like the metaphor of the fire burning in this case, not because something is going wrong, but rather because we feel motivated. We want to take yeah. on the challenges. It's a great metaphor. Thank you for sharing that, Jan. You're welcome. Part of a successful Scrum Master job is to help the product owner. Tomorrow we explore that critical role in Scrum, the product owner role. Tune in to learn about product owner anti-patterns, what you can do to help the product owner, and a real life example of what a great product owner is and what made it so. Tomorrow on our Friday product owner episode. See you tomorrow. We really hope you liked our show. And if you did, why not rate this podcast on Stitcher or iTunes? Share this podcast and let other Scrum Masters know about this valuable resource for their work. Remember that sharing is caring.